Hello Flight Simmers, hello friends, welcome back everyone and welcome to Cologne today. We are doing a nice long haul flight in the beautiful 747-8 freighter and as it is the very first time we are flying UPS uh, on this channel. And I was in the mood for a 747 freighter flight, uh, I didn't quite know which one to pick as there are so many interesting flights uh, around the world. Um, but then I came to the conclusion, let's do a proper uh, cargo airline, which we otherwise would not see on the channel. Um, yeah, other than cargo operations, of course. And uh, so I came up with this flight, Cologne to Hong Kong, um, which will take us 11 and a half hours of flight time today. So it's a seriously long flight. And um, yeah, guess what? <laughs> I have loaded up to uh, maximum capacity. So we are at maximum takeoff weight here today which is a staggering 447 tons so a lot of weight we are going to lift up in the 747 today and uh, yeah very much looking forward to this flight um, it is early evening time here at Cologne unfortunately already dark um, departure time is 6 30 p.m. and then we will get to Hong Kong uh, around midday like 1 p.m. or so so it will be a uh, daytime approach into Hong Kong and I'm flying offline since there's uh, currently no ATC online and uh, there's a FedEx 777 back there I think over here there are some other uh, company aircrafts MD-11 beautiful and uh, yeah so that's the setup for today we are uh, flying a UPS livery from a website called OS simulations I will try to remember to link you the livery down below um, it's a repainter who reached out to me asking if I could check out his liveries and I was happy to do, to do so and um, one positive thing about this one is that he is bringing aircraft configs uh, with all his liveries which is super cool so I trust that today we have a close to real world um, yeah, flight deck configuration and uh, yeah other than that I think there's not too much to add from here whether here in Cologne is good I haven't checked at all the Hong Kong weather to be honest but since it's like 11 and a half hours away until we get there we can uh, check it out later so that being said let's get to it all right here we are at the flight deck uh, a little bit dark in here but I have some lights switched on um, let's see I was just activating the route and um, that's loading in it's probably gonna be a few pages of routing in here um, in the meantime I've also checked the weather for Hong Kong and it's gonna be all right there might be a little bit of rain um, slightly reduced visibility but nothing crazy we are expecting for Hong Kong later on so that's it seven page of routing that looks good so let's go departure um, wind is coming let's check weather for Cologne variable winds 210 at 7 um, I think they are mainly departing runway 1 for left for this one, especially for the heavies. So let's take this one. And it will be one of the Kumi departures. Which one exactly I don't know at the moment. So let's go over to the charts. And try to find the right stuff for us. Okay, so here's one. There's uh, actually a bunch of departures going out of one for left. I wasn't quite sure which one to take. Let's try to do this one. It's a Kumik 1 Quebec. Um, oh, let's close some doors. Otherwise, this is going to be very annoying. Close all. Um, yeah, let's do the other door in the second. Uh, let's finish this one first. So, Kumik 1 Quebec. Um, there's one departure for Kumik, especially for three engine heavy aircrafts. Um, probably custom designed for UPS operations here. I don't know. Let's try to go with this one and see what the FMS is telling us. Uh, so Kumik 1 Quebec. Let's see if this works. Root. Activate. Uh, performance. Accepted first. So uh, zero fuel weight. 302 that's correct um, reserves checking my flight plan we will need 13.1 that's quite close uh, that's fine cruise initially um, actually gonna be 290 
although if we can climb 310 it might as well be fine for us uh, cost index 80 RVSM that's fine Lex root data let's check over here fuel on arrival 20.4 a lot of fuel and that's good VNAV transition I believe is 5000 here yes it is so 5000 for the departure speed 283 below flight level 100 that's quite typical for a heavy 747 we are exceeding 250 uh, today we are exceeding it by quite a bit actually 283 that's a lot um, but that's fine in controlled airspace um, so let's bring this up and put it next to the chart and see if this makes sense so Delta Kilo 920 120 or above then 1640 or above speed 205 3000 above and no more constraints after this now I believe the aircraft is able to do this otherwise it would probably give me some um, errors here but let's double check so 1120 above if we delete it let's see where we are yeah 19 so it's fine apparently the aircraft thinks we're able to do this uh, so I can't judge it any differently than that so we should be fine Right, uh, now let's quickly get rid of the nose cargo and then we can close that door as well. Now it's closing. Very good. In the meantime, firing up the APU. Um, okay, what else? Oxygen jack. We can almost do some checklists. Seatbelts coming to on. Yeah, we are quite on time, even a little bit uh, ahead of time, but that's that's good, of course. And um, yeah, calculations, of course, performance calculations. Uh, let's look at those. Bring up the airport chart. Um, let's go full length for sure today so alpha 7 would be the one performance uh, copy FMC data conditions dry once again bringing up the weather so that's gonna be 220 at 7 outside air temperature 12 QNH 1019 447.5 that's correct thrust rating takeoff optimum aircon off anti ice off center of gravity whatever it is I don't know um, 22 okay let's see what we got here okay <laughs> that's a bad start Ah, sorry, it was... Ah, okay, now I got it. Uh, my bad. So, actually, for um, flap 20, we can't do it. It says uh, max takeoff rate 443, but apparently flap optimum, which then gives us flap 10, we do get a toga-powered aircraft. It's just saying no valid assumed temperatures, which is fine, but we do have takeoff data. So, uh, ooh, I'm looking forward to this. It's going to be crazy. Thrust limit, nothing. 98.2, all it got. Flap 10, center of gravity, and then it's 166, 182, 195. Wow. That's gonna be violent. <laughs> I think that's, that's the best word uh, to describe what's happening during this departure. It's gonna be violent. Um, just checking my charts again. Initial climb. 5,000. I mean, we are flying offline, but nevertheless, let's put 5,000 here. It will anyway take us a little bit of time to get there. And uh, initial heading 137.
like that. Flight directors, LNAV, VNAV. Cool, now let's continue with a few things here. APU packs. Oh, I really need to remember to switch it off for the departure. That's fine. Um, pre flight checklist, oxygen is checked. Flight instruments 22.5, 22.5. 1019 are the check. Park and brake is set. Check is completed. Okay. Aux. Aux. Fuel pumps. I believe we pretty much need everything to come on. Um, beacons, logo lights are on. Overhead panel is set. We shall disconnect everything from the outside this is coming to 1000 sorry 1000 TA and then let's ask for a pushback release parking brake okay parking brakes released commencing push and All engines go. clear, start at will. Okay, looking good. Let's wait a few seconds then we can fire up. Um, I just find it so amazing that uh, we will be at max takeoff weight today and uh, looking at flight radar every now and then, uh, you can see UPS 747s doing even longer routes than this one. Um, so it's quite amazing to think about. They cannot even, on this kind of flight, put a full payload on a 747 on an 11 and a half hour flight. It kind of surprises me, to be honest. Maybe 747 comes to its limitations already on, on this kind of routing. But yeah, I mean, of, of course, it's a long flight after all. Okay, pushback is progressing. Let's uh, fire up then. Uh, packs are coming off. Let's think about it. 748. So starting 3 and 4, just like this. Auto start. Even some uh, active traffic here. Eurowings A320 coming in. Yeah, I ins installed a custom uh, GXX GSX config for this airport, so uh, pushback is looking rather good. Okay, two good engine Next starts. Break. Why did I forget to hit this button earlier? I might have. Let's put it on. Um, yeah, unfortunately, I don't quite know how to do a proper departure briefing. Um, that would certainly be quite interesting to do it for this departure since. Uh, yeah, we are basically maxing out the performance of the aircraft. Uh, so bringing this aircraft to a, to a hold in case of a rejected takeoff, uh, that's quite something. But yeah, we are in a simulator environment. No failures aren't, so that should not be an issue. Okay, right I believe clear, right we have clear. two good engine starts. Ah, that's why it switches off, of course. Sorry, I wasn't paying attention when the engines are on and the APU on each side comes off. Right, so APU shutdown, hydraulics to auto packs coming back on for the moment. This is coming to RTO. We have a flap 10 departure. Um, 
This is coming to weather and turbulence. We are doing a flight control check. Oh, I forgot the checklist. Sorry, my bad. MCP is set, takeoff speed set, unseated prepared trim. Text and takeoff briefing. Uh, bad piloting already here. Sorry about this. Um, election. It's true. Why is it off? Shouldn't be off. Okay. Weird. I think uh, it was messed up because I manually hit the APU Gen 2 button earlier. Um, before we do this flight control check. Ah, there it is. Full left. Full right. Neutral. Full up. Full down. Neutral. Rudder. Full left. Full right. Neutral. I accidentally just hit the parking brake, I think. Yeah, I did. Okay, taxi. Turn off lights. Checklist. Before text checklist. NTI is not required. Recall. Uh, check flag controls. Check ground open clear. And flaps are set. Now we just need to do the takeoff trim 6.8. Um, dang, where's. Ah, there it is. <laughs> oh, I haven't been flying this aircraft for so long. Uh, 6.8 trim is set before takeoff checklist is completed. Ooh, quite active here this airfield tonight. What's coming in there? Some yellow A320. Okay, uh, let's do it. Okay, short taxi only. Let's set everything up. Dome light is coming off now for the departure. Some Eurowings traffic over there. Looking good. Let's slow down a bit. We want to be nice and slow for turning this heavy aircraft. Okay, then we need to set the um, transponder, TARI. You will put traffic and weather. Um, is it on? I thought it was. TARA. Okay, and over here, traffic and um, let's do weather as well. Terrain is not a threat. Okay, the approach is clear. So, UPS 18 Heavy is cleared for takeoff runway 14 left. Strobes and wing lights just for the looks of it. Oh, actually, I think a lot of American operators are uh, switching on the wing lights uh, for all takeoff and landings. So, it might be quite accurate, accurate after all. Cool, checklists are all completed. Uh, let's get a good line up here. <laughs> let's take the full runway. Let's try to get a good one. Need to overshoot it a bit. Wow, this is so cool. I think I overdid it a bit. <laughs> Never mind, uh, looking good. So I will stand on the brakes for a little bit. And, uh, okay, double checking everything is looking good to me. Let's rock and roll. Oh, 
Or is coming up. Toga. Thrust set. Oh, Pex, Pex, Pex. Almost forgot. I almost forgot. See, it's giving us a bit more, <laughs> more power. That's important for this takeoff. I hate that it's not part of the checklist. 80 knots, 80 knots is checked. Oh, it's going to be a long takeoff roll. Oh, come on, Eric. Oh, come on. Please speed up. It's crazy, that's V1 checked. Imagine you have to stop it at this kind of speed. Rotate. Easy rotation, waiting for the lift off. There it is. Positive rate of climb. Positive rate of climb, gears coming up. Oh, that's a big sound difference. Really cool. Let's follow the flight director. <laughs> wow, that's a heavy departure. Wow, okay. I think we are past acceleration. Ah, no, it's the speed constraints, of course. Sorry, my bad. We are hardly climbing at all and just keeping at the speed. Okay, now that's acceleration. Okay, I need to switch on the packs. Uh, let's do autopilot. Packs 1, 2, and 3. Let's keep climbing then. 3, 1, 0. Now we are picking up a little bit of speed. Flaps 5. Speed checked. Flaps 5. I don't know what happened to the sound when we lifted off. Uh, felt like a big sound difference, which should not be like this, but uh, I can't change it now. Okay, flaps one, speed checked, flaps one. Wow, let's see how long this climb is going to take. I think it's almost going to take like half an hour to get up there. Okay, in the meantime, uh, taxi and take off lights, uh, turn off lights, sorry. Okay, flaps up, speed check, flaps up. Quite bumpy. Okay, now we're climbing with uh, 2700 feet per minute. That's quite okay. Oh, why is that coming up? That's weird. Don't need that right now. Okay, after takeoff checklist is completed. Let's see. Can we consider a direct somewhere? That's Kumik. Now we can't really see the route on here, that's a bit unfortunate. Transition, standard. Okay guys, so... 
Let's uh, switch over to music and cruise mode. I hope you guys have enjoyed this departure together with me. That was fun. That was challenging, honestly. There was a lot of weight lifting off the ground. But here we are cruising and we will do so for the next 11 and a half hours. And then I will meet you over for a landing in Hong Kong. Enjoy! Hello friends, welcome back. Here we are getting uh, to Hong Kong and uh, yeah, you might have just seen it uh, during the cruise mode. We just passed Hong Kong basically. The airport is back there. Um, we came in from the north. Uh, we have to fly past uh, towards the south. Uh, Hong Kong only has these arrivals coming from the ocean. So that's why um, we are passing the airport and then basically making a 180 uh, to the left. And then heading for the final approach, we are about to pass flight level 180. Uh, there's still a meter since we needed that for the Chinese airspace, but uh, for Hong Kong we don't need it anymore. So that's that. Now let's, uh, yeah, first let's look at the landing. So we will land uh, 07 right. Conditions are dry, wind 4 knots. From 040, 22 degrees, 1019, just a few clouds out there as you can see, it's like, or here it's a bit more, but back there not too much. So weather is uh, quite fine today. Flap 30 landing, quite heavy still, 321 as expected, let's see, right now we are at 328, so slightly below already, that's good. Because you can see, even on Outbreak 3, we need quite a bit of runway, uh, 9000 feet required. Um, V ray speed 160. It's crazy. So we are still quite heavy. Um, high payload here today. Uh, that's why we are carrying a lot of speed on this arrival. And let me show you the charts. So flying the um, Sierra 7 Alpha coming from Sierra. Speed 280. We should be at 280. Yes, we are. Next up is Kanto. Uh, flight level 130 or above. And then Murray where we need to be above flight level 110, that's the crucial limitation here. And silver, limes, and then on to the airport. And it's been a while since I last flew to Hong Kong, but you might or might not know that uh, they have opened the new runway, which is 07 left, but unfortunately the scenery does not have it yet. That's a bit unfortunate. Uh, otherwise I would have loved to uh, fly into the new runway um, 07 Center is currently under reconstruction, so that's not open. And that's why we are landing 07 right today, which is anyway quite convenient for us uh, since the cargo area is down here. Um, but yeah, that's the thing. ILS 07. Oh, that's the wrong one. I'm just seeing. I need uh, the one for 07 right. like this so limes uh, Stella and then the intercept for the localizer and the fancy go-around procedure which we uh, know from previous flights already uh, let's see if there's anything crucial on here 
up to 5,000. Uh, that's good. 1,600. Minimum 625 for category D aircraft. So they, that's 630 turned in here. Yeah, apparently we have an overfly for this waypoint, which is uh, interesting. I haven't noticed that earlier on the charts, but uh, yeah, so now we're turning left to Murray. Um, bit of a detour here. Right, and then since um, Flight Lab 110 is styled in for Murray, after that we can descend, let's see, basically 1700 all the way down there. Yeah, we might be capturing the ILS fairly late. Uh, let's see, 1700. So we pretty much almost want to be on a full config when we intercept the uh, glide slope. Unless, of course, we can intercept it earlier. Let's see. Right, now, what else? Um, calculation is done. Transition level is 110, so we can now go to local 1019, is it? Or was it 1020? Let's double check the weather just to be sure. Um, 1019, that's fine. Yeah, 4 knots of wind. Nice weather. Nice weather, that's for sure. So, 1019 is set. Uh, let's complete the approach checklist. Our temperatures are set to local. Approach checklist is completed. Uh, well, that's a bit of circling. Let's cut direct silver otherwise the aircraft's just gonna go mad in these turns and now we are a bit high speed is now dropping back to four zero we have a speed constraint 180 for Stella and that's okay um, so let's see, let's use a bit of speed break. I don't want to end up uh, too high on the approach. So just a bit like that. Okay, 10,000 um, lights are coming on. Yeah, and what a long flight this was. Uh, we've burned so much fuel uh, north of 100 tons of fuel. I think about one t 120 tons of fuel we've burned throughout this cruise. It's really a seriously long flight. Um, okay, still a bit high. I'm leaving the speed brakes out for now. That's all looking good. I hope AI traffic is not messing with us. But I can't see anything on the radar. Just, uh, just oh, there's something. Seems to be climbing out. Yeah, let's see. I hope we are lucky, and AI traffic is not uh, in our way. Okay, let's put this over to progress, so we see the distance to go. Now it's 33 miles, 33 track miles. So everything is looking good for now. Okay, now the aircraft is putting in power, um, so we definitely don't need the speed brake any longer. This can go to arm. And yes, very soon now we are going to dive uh, into these clouds. We have a DF DME of 20 miles to the runway, but track miles is still 27, so it's a bit early for flaps. Still a bit early. Let's see, as soon as the aircraft wants to slow down, um, then we might... Yeah, then we actually need to put out the flaps. Very cool.
Okay, looks like now the aircraft does want to slow down. Um, so let's go flap one. Speed checked. Flaps one. I'm looking for this page where it's telling me that it's uh, it can't slow down due to uh, flap limitation, but I can't find it anywhere. Speed to 20. Oh, now there's some aircraft coming in on the arrival. Oh, it's quite a lot. Oh, I might need uh, I may, might need to intervene with these guys. Okay, let's slow down manually. Uh, this is taking me too long. We are approaching Stella very rapidly now. So let's go flap 5. And let's also go flap uh, 10. Okay, and yeah, I actually went ahead and I deleted a few of those. Um, I didn't really uh, want to mess around with uh, AI traffic a lot. And that's something I find the PMD should be very uh, inaccurate. Um, I really can't imagine the real aircraft is messing about with the speed so much as uh, this aircraft does. Really feels a bit weird sometimes. Okay, 10 miles to go. We are at uh, flap 10, which is good. There's uh, the airfield. So, we are cleared for the approach. ILS runway 07 right. Yeah, some aircrafts behind me, but I don't care about those. They will eventually go around if I'm still on the runway. Okay, nine miles to go. Um, it should be the localizer any second now. Ideally. There it is, localizer glide slope. That's good. Um, go around to 5,000. Eight miles to run. Last check down here. Um, 155 plus 5 makes it 160. So that's still accurate. Um, gear down, flaps 20. Yeah, we overshot the localizer a bit. I never noticed this uh, so much early, but I really feel like the LNAV and VNAV profile of the 747 is not quite the best. Flaps 25. And flaps uh, 30. Right, uh, let's switch off all the lights. Uh, wing lights as well. Landing checklist. All green. Okay, I don't know what UPS ops are, but I believe it's probably flying auto thrust on. So let's disconnect the autopilot. My aircraft, what's going on down there? Some aircraft speeding up. Ooh, okay. Trying to stay on the profile. Right, and let's hope for a good one now. Is he airborne? Yeah, that looks good. Wow, look at the skyline back there. Awesome stuff. Okay, let's focus on the flying now. Wind is stable, so that's really easy in that regard. Ok, 
Okay, at LB747 we are looking for um, three whites, one red. Continue, since the cockpit is a bit higher and it's hard to see, but I think we are spot. No, I think that's two whites, two reds still. And we will start the flare at around um, 50 feet. Okay, one red, three whites. I'm descending a bit fast now, but uh, need to go down there. 50, 30, 20, 10. Come on, get down, get down, get down. There we are. Reverse. And diesel. Yeah, not quite on the center line, but it's okay. Okay, manual braking, idle forward. Uh, let's take the next one. <laughs> I think I'm gonna get hot, hot brakes if I force it uh, down on this one. Now the uh, loud noise is back, which we have experienced uh, for the lift of early on in Cologne. That's weird. Okay, exiting right here. on kilo six and then it's gonna be right in turn that might be the fans ah the recirculation fans okay not quite sure why they switch off in the air but um, yeah it's very loud okay let's see if I can make this right in turn okay quick clean up Uh, let's fire up the APU, only short taxi. Terrain, traffic, uh, what else? Disarm, TA, traffic, and weather's coming off. Landing lights coming off and strobes. Wing lights as well. Okay, left hand turn. Okay, let's see. Um, do we want an apron stand or a terminal? Actually, I kind of fancy the apron uh, looking onto the um, passenger terminal. So that would be, um, he's on Charlie 20, then there's one eight, and this is Charlie, can't see it, 27? Looks like UPS handling, okay. That should work. Uh, that's enough spacing to this one. Um, so let's see. Taking it nice and slow. I think I turned a bit too early. Ok, 
Okay, let's shut down two engines. And even a docking system, awesome. Okay, here we are. Parking brake, APU, generators one and two. Killing engines one and four. Standby to, oh sorry, that's not what I wanted, 2000. Like this. Fuel pumps, um, beacons. Packs can stay on, hydraulics coming off. Okay, I think that's it. If I I hope I haven't missed anything. Let's see. Shut a checklist, spark breaker set. Shut on checklist completed. Beautiful. Cool. So let's ask for the loading. The boarding requested. Nice, so here we are everyone. Look at this, tail stand is coming in. No cargo is open. Look at this parking, that was spot on. Right on the mark. That worked very well. Really, really nice stuff. Hong Kong City back there. Recording stopped. Uh, okay, let's see. Um, if I can play, the, can play the recording, there are a lot of Cathay aircrafts over there, naturally, hey, Hong Kong, and uh, ooh, Cathay Cargo is leaving the scene, Kalita Cargo as well, and Cargo looks as well, some weird turning going on here, but never mind. Okay, guys, that was a cool flight operating the 747-8 uh, in the UPS colors. I think uh, it's really fun uh, to be flying cargo ops from time to time. Uh, gives us the chance to experience other parts of airports <laughs> compared to normal passenger flying. Uh, that's why I find it so cool. And uh, yeah, I hope you guys have liked it as well. Um, I have a feeling that recently uh, you guys fancy my P3D videos a lot, which I appreciate um, a lot, uh, seriously. I, I still enjoy flying, uh, especially the 737 and the 83. 20 in, in Microsoft Flight Sim, so I will continue doing that as well. So, as I've said previously, um, it will still be a mixture of both sims going forward. Right, Pilots and on that starting. note, and on this very, very cool and beautiful view here from Hong Kong, I'm gonna say goodbye for today. Uh, thank you so much for joining, and uh, see you around next time. Take care.